Hello and welcome to another episode. In this episode we're going to be talking about the standard streams, standard in, standard out, and standard air, uh, and how you might use them and what they're for, and uh, yeah, that sort of stuff. So let's let's jump into it. Okay, so we're going to be talking about console applications for these three streams. Uh, for windowed applications, they don't apply as much because the three streams usually aren't connected to anything. Um, so we're, we're mostly talking about console applications. There are some cases where the streams do get connected for console applications. For instance, like if you launch, um, I think Update Manager is one example. Oops. Uh, update Manager. If you launch this from the console here, sometimes... Sometimes it'll print stuff here. <laughs> I guess not this time. Anyway, but most of the time, the, the standard streams are really only for uh, console applications. And the first and probably the easiest to, okay, we're not, we're not gonna actually run updates. Uh, the easiest to explain here is standard in. Uh, and standard in is the input stream. It allows you to read from the keyboard. Uh, I guess I'll just do a quick example of that. Uh, we can do that with Python, right? Um, we'll open up our text editor. Uh, in Python, the three streams are accessible through the sys module. Uh, there's sys.standardin, sys.standardout, and sys.standardair. And um, to read from them, you'll use sys.standardin.read or readline or whatever. Uh, it acts like a file. And I guess standardout and standardair also act like files. Um, and in, in Unix, they are actually files. Uh, you'll also have these three streams on Windows. However, the examples I'm going to show probably won't work unless you're working with like Git Bash or another uh, shell that implements Bash-like syntax. So we'll start with this, uh, and we'll actually we'll probably print this just so we can see. Uh, got this thing. Yes, cool. So if we run this script now, with Python three. Uh, you'll see that it's kind of hanging here. It's waiting for me to type input into the program. Um, and if I type hello world and press enter, that also does nothing because I asked for the entire contents of the file. If we look at it over here, uh, you'll see I did sys.standardin.read. This is going to read the entire file at once. Um, now, if I press control D, this will signal end of file. Uh, so I, I press control D right here, and then this is the print that we got out of here. So that's standard in. Uh, you can also redirect things into standard in. So if we were to take this file here and redirect in, uh, well, we, we can do something silly and redirect in a file, which is what single arrow does. And so that'll that'll redirect in t.py. So it'll put the contents of t.py as standard in. And you'll see here that uh, we should probably just bang R so that we get the representation here. Um, so you can see that this is the contents of t.py, and that was what we got when we did sys.standardin.read. You can also pipe into it using a pipe character, and this, this takes the standard output of this process, which we haven't talked about standard out yet, but we'll talk about it soon, uh, and passes that as the inputs to this. So you can see that uh, this printed hi plus a new line, and that was the input to this next program. Cool, so I think that covers standard in. Uh, let's talk about standard out next. In, um, so standard out is kind of the default place to produce output. Uh, usually you'll use this if your program like makes some useful output, like the echo program, for instance. Uh, it takes all of its arguments and prints them to standard output. And in Python, if you just do print, uh, by default, print goes to standard out. You can also use sys.standardout.write this also goes to standard out. Uh, usually it's not a good idea to mix print and sys.standardout.write um, due to, although I think they might have fixed this. There, there's some like odd buffering that can happen here where you might get things in an order you don't expect or um, yeah, bas basically or ordering is the, the main problem there. Uh, so let's actually comment out the uh, standard in read here just so this is a little bit easier to see. And you'll see that these two things print to standard out. Now you can also redirect standard out. So this was redirecting standard in. Uh, you can redirect standard out with an arrow going the other direction. So if we want to redirect that to a file, we can do uh, an arrow to F. And you can see now that this output goes to F. And if you want to redirect this to something that you know you don't see, you can write it to dev null. On uh, Windows, this will just be NUL, which is a, a special device-like thing that magically exists everywhere. 
because uh, Windows, you know, Windows is similar to a, a Linux-like distribution, but um, <laughs> does does some things a little bit differently. Uh, so that's standard out, and uh, yeah, so let's talk about standard error next. It's also in the sys module, and uh, you can also write to it using print, uh, but you use the file keyword argument. Again, like standard in, standard out, and star standard error act like files. This goes to standard error, and you can use file equals sys.standarderror. Or again, you can do sys.standarderror.write. This also goes to standard error. Uh, and you'll see when, it, when I run this, by default, both standard out and standard error will be displayed on my console. You do this here. You'll see that we get the standard out and we get the standard error. Now, I think due to the way, <laughs> I think this is line buffered here. So sometimes these are actually out of order due to the way streams work. Um, but you know, I think almost all the time you're going to see these in order. And generally what standard error gets used for is, uh, well, <laughs> as it kind of says, error messages or other diagnostic information. Uh, usually you want your program's primary output to go on standard out and any sort of like logging or error messaging or, you know, problem statements or stuff that's unrelated to the data of your output uh, can go to standard error. Like one example that, um, that I've seen before is like a tool which will format code. It might print the formatted code to standard out uh, but it might print a message that's like formatted foo.py to standard error. That way, if a, if another program which needs the formatted output, uh, it can just read standard out and the diagnostic messages can go to standard error. Uh, and you'll see if I pipe, you know, if I pipe again the standard out here, uh, the program is still going to display the standard error, even though we put the standard out into a file. You can actually pipe both of these at the same time with arrow ampersand, and so you can see now, if we look at F, it's the exact contents that we saw on the on the terminal here. Ah, but interestingly, here's here's what I was talking about with the ordering. Uh, interestingly, here we got standard error before standard out, even though standard error was printed last. And this has to do with file buffering and stuff. I think if I put in a sys dot standard out dot flush here, I think that would make it in order. Yeah, so this this synchronized the streams and, and made sure that standard out got flushed before. Uh, standard error tends to be flushed more readily just because you want to see your debugging messages as soon as possible. Um, I think that's that's mostly it for the three standard streams. Um, hopefully this was useful, and if you guys have additional things you want me to explain, uh, you know, leave a comment below or contact me on the various platforms. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.